Hey everyone, uh, my name is Mr. Hefner and my guess is you're watching this video because you are going to be one of my students coming up in the next semester. I wanna take just a little bit of time in case I missed you in class uh, to go over some things about the course and I'll let you know a little bit about who I am. We're gonna be working together for a long time and uh, I hope we understand a little bit about what each of us likes and dislikes and, and find the strengths of everybody in the room so uh, we can work best together. So. Uh, Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'd like to let you know about my course is Schoology is going to be your best friend. I've been using Schoology since long before the pandemic. In fact, I, I was using Schoology before Conrad Weiser even started with Schoology. The important thing to keep in mind about Schoology, unlike Skyward, Skyward is a records keeping system. That's all it is. Schoology, on the other hand, is a uh, learning management system. And so I have Schoology set up so that everything you are going to need for my course is here. Every day you're going to be able to come in here, whether you're in person, whether you're remote, whether you're out on a sick day, whether we have a snow day, but every day you're going to be able to come in here and you're going to be able to look at uh, updates right over here. In fact, when you open Schoology, it's going to go to updates uh, and you will see the plan for that day with all of the links. And you're also gonna see uh, over here on the right here, you have uh, the calendar, the upcoming. You can always click on the little calendar icon and see the full calendar for the month, but you will see the assignments that are, are due. You'll see the due dates. Uh, you'll see rubrics. So for every single assignment that you do for me, you'll be able to see exactly how it's going to be graded. Once it's been graded, you'll be able to see uh, the scored rubric, the points, uh, comments from me, if I've left any comments for you. The important thing to keep in mind is that if you uh, use Schoology and keep the notifications on, you're going to get all kinds of reminders from me about when things are due. And so the, the class policy on, on late work, um, I'll talk about a little bit later, but uh, it's really important because Schoology will keep you on track. If, if you are not aware in my class of when something is due, you're not turning on your computer and you're not logging into Schoology because everything is there every day. So Schoology, number one, Schoology is your friend. All right, uh, in Schoology, I'm gonna go over a couple things next that the school district wants me to cover with you, but they're probably not first on your list of things you wanna know. Uh, you're gonna find a copy of the course syllabus. Now in college, uh, and this is a college prep class, but in college, you're going to find that a syllabus is many pages long and includes all kinds of details. Uh, a high school syllabus is a little bit simpler. Uh, you have up here uh, in the upper left here, you have uh, your, your course description and you'll find that same thing in the course handbook. So you probably saw that last year as an eighth grader when you were planning to come to ninth grader. The objectives of our course are here, and then all of the units we're going to do throughout the course are listed here with the, uh, the literature that we're going to be reading. What do we expect you to be able to do at the end of this course? And then information about the textbook and resources. But again, as I said, every, every resource for this course is in Schoology, including your textbook. Now, a little bit about me uh, as a teacher here. I have been teaching at Weiser since 1984. So that's a long time. And that was the picture they took. We didn't have school IDs, but that was my official school records picture the year I started here, right out of college, 22 years old. And uh, over those years uh, from 1984 until now, uh, I, I've always taught ninth grade. Every single year I've had at least one ninth grade class. Uh, it's been ninth grade college prep, ninth grade honors, uh, and we used to have something called ninth grade regular, uh, which we just call ninth grade English now. I've taught 11th grade, which is American Lit. Uh, I wrote a class uh, for Shakespeare, which you can take as an elective. That runs every two years. And uh, then Writers Guild uh, is a course that uh, I created for students who want to actually get published and you work with other student writers and uh, you submit things to contests. And by the end of, uh, of the course, uh, the class always publishes a book. So on your screen, uh, you see three of the anthologies uh, from previous years. Uh, another thing about me is, is a graduate of Penn State. I got my Bachelor of Science degree in secondary education. So uh, I'm a Nittany Lion fan and I bleed blue which is great because I get to use the same colors here at Weiser. I got my master's degree uh, at Wilkes University and I've taken other courses at various places over, over the years. And uh, the biggest thing professionally that helped me out was uh, in 1992, 
I became a fellow with the National Writing Project through uh, the Pennsylvania Writing and Literature Project at Westchester University and completely changed the way uh, I approach teaching language arts. It's still an influence on me today. And for a while, uh, I even served as a, a co-director for technology uh, with that organization. Things that I like to do when I'm not in school, uh, I, I love traveling, I love, you know, I, I'm not somebody who wants to go to four-star hotels throughout Europe. Uh, I like camping, I like hiking, I like taking my bike out on, on trails and things like that. Maine is one of my favorite places to go. Uh, I'm a Civil War buff. As I said, I, I, I'm a Nittany Lions fan and uh, I love going to at least one game a year, but I, I catch them all on TV. And I love music, all kinds of music. Uh, some of my favorite bands, you know, are here on the screen, but I don't listen to just rock music. I like progressive rock. I like classic rock. Uh, I, at one point, I, I played bagpipes in a, uh, a, a Highland bagpipe marching band. Uh, I play banjo. I love bluegrass music right now. And uh, so music is really important. There's no question. Uh, I, I saw a quote once that said something like, life without music is a mistake. And I, I think there's some truth and I owe an awful lot to the people who make music. Uh, even though I never get to meet them, they're a big part of my life. And like I said, um, I, I, I play five string banjo. I'm still learning, uh, you know, at, at my age, you know, uh, this, this doesn't come easily, but uh, it's something that I do for fun. And I, I guess we would say that's my hobby. Uh, and then I do genealogy work. I, I, you've seen those commercials on TV for ancestry.com. I started doing genealogy work, trying to uh, learn the history of my family when I was uh, just about 16 years old. And I did it the old fashioned way with books and documents and records halls and things. And now I do have access to ancestry, but uh, every summer I spend some time trying to find out a little bit more about the history of my family. When it comes to uh, entertainment, I don't watch a whole lot of television. I don't go to the movies a whole lot, but I, I do like fantasy type things. I like adventures like Marvel Comics movies. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. And, you know, from a, a comedy standpoint, this show called Ted Lasso, uh, you know, in the, the months leading up to my making of this presentation, uh, this was an Apple TV Plus original. I think it, I think it became my favorite comedy series ever. Uh, season one was out at the time I was making this video, and I know that they've already signed for two more seasons, so I'm looking forward to those coming along soon. Uh, at home, I have, uh, these, these are my guys right now. Uh, there's Watson. He was the first one I brought in. Watson thinks he's really a human. He acts like a dog, but he thinks he's a human, definitely not a cat. Uh, and Minerva is uh, not his sister, but we call her his sister. Uh, she was a rescue as well. And then Loki is, is my silver and, and white cat. He's an interesting story. Uh, I got him from a cat rescue, but he was actually rescued off the streets of Kuwait. And uh, some nice person, nice rescuer over there, bought him a ticket and flew him on a plane from Kuwait to Dulles, uh, Dulles Airport near Washington, D.C., where he was picked up by a local cat rescue. And, and then I adopted him out. So uh, he's come a long way to be my cat. Now, a couple of uh, kind of like standard procedure type things. You have the, uh, the school student handbook. It is uh, preloaded into every laptop. So uh, I'm not gonna go over everything. Hopefully you took a look at that at, at some point. Uh, just a couple things. Teachers are obligated to uh, take attendance and, and mark tardiness. So make sure you come to class on time. I, I don't have the liberty of just letting you in the class late. I've got to follow the procedures there. So uh, keep an eye on your watch and your times and things like that. Dress code is listed in there as well. I don't see too many problems with dress code, but anyway. Now, as far as passes go, uh, we're, you, you might know by now that we're using e-hall pass in the high school. I really love this. I, I used to always find it to be kind of like disrespectful that you would have to raise your hand uh, in a class of you know 29 of your peers and ask for permission uh, to use a lavatory. It's kind of a personal thing. So we have uh, e-hall pass right now. And, and the way we'll use that is one person from the classroom may be out at a time. When you need to use the lavatory uh, or go to the library, you simply use your own computer. You start your own pass. I'll approve it from um, my laptop, which is uh, sitting next to me at all times. Uh, and you go and you come back and, and you cancel the pass. So uh, e-hall pass works really great. Um, so that's what we'll be using in my classroom. As far as electronic devices go, the, uh, 
The student handbook, you know, tells you that you may use your device for texting only while you're at lunch or in the hallways between classes. Uh, just be careful if you do do a lavatory pass and you're using your phone to text as you're walking down the hallway uh, while classes are going on, a staff member could uh, confiscate your phone and take it to the office. Uh, you're not allowed to be texting during the day except at lunch and between classes. Now that said, I do not have a problem if you're going to use, uh, use your phone uh, for research. We often have our computers out and we multitask using a, a second device to look up facts or verify things. Um, and I don't have a problem with using it for music uh, at certain times. For instance, uh, when you're taking a test, put your headphones in, listen to some music while you're testing. It may help insulate you from distractions. Uh, same thing is true for days that we read in class. Uh, sometimes it's so quiet in the room, any distraction, a, a noise in the hallway, somebody moving around can break your concentration. And I found that students who have their, uh, uh, their earplugs in and have some quiet music going while they're reading uh, often stay focused better. So I, I'm not opposed to using those. Uh, most, most cell phones today have the ability to record videos and, and take pictures. Uh, just understand that if you do that in any public school classroom without the permission of the people in the room, you are violating the law. Everybody who comes to school has a right to privacy. The law requires that you be here, so the law cannot uh, require you to be part of other people's pictures. Uh, and so uh, do not, repeat, do not use your camera, do not use your video camera, unless there's a project going on and you wanna record that and you have permission, right? This even applies to selfies that you might take, uh, which have someone else in view behind you. So uh, do not use your phone for pictures. Uh, fire drills, uh, when you're in the classroom, I'll show you the sign, but uh, we will have to do these from time to time. From my classroom, we simply go out the door, turn to the left and uh, take the first exit. So that's pretty simple. Now, a couple of things we work on in my class. I, I mentioned earlier on that uh, I, I really was changed when I became a fellow of the uh, National Writing Project back in 1992. And my goals uh, for you for the year are, are fairly global. I want you to be able to leave my course a better reader than you were when you came in. I want you to leave as a better writer than you were when you came in, a better speaker, a better listener, and most importantly of all, I want you to be able to leave my class as a better thinker. Most people, <laughs> don't want to sound insulting, do not think. They simply repeat processes that they've used before, even when they're complex. You know, if you're in a math class and you do a long division problem, it's not really thinking. It's just simply repeating a process. Uh, so we want to look at uh, problem solving skills, research skills, uh, ways to analyze and, and uh, assess the validity of information that you're finding uh, to avoid things uh, that are called logical fallacies so that your logic makes sense. Uh, but we've got a whole semester to uh, work on that as we go through. Our course is made up of five critical experiences and these come to us from something called uh, the Pennsylvania Literacy Framework. But we'll be doing literature study uh, and, and we'll study in this course literature by genre. We'll start out with some folklore and then we may do poetry, uh, some short stories, focus on a particular author for a little while. We'll do one novel before the course is over. We'll do some nonfiction and we'll do a play. Uh, there's guided writing and guided writing is the kind of thing where I'm teaching you something uh, that I want you then to try. It might be a, a new form of writing, might be a new style of writing, might be an, a purpose for writing. And then there's what's called independent reading and writing. And independent reading and writing is when you find your own audience. You get started on a, a task or something like that. Um, you find your own purpose, you find your own style, your own format and things. Uh, and that'll be a big part of this class. And of course, reading independently. One of the things that I want you to be able to do throughout your life is find books that interest you and read. I promise you, you will learn more from the books you choose on your own uh, than you ever will from books that have been assigned to you. Uh, language study might be some things like grammar, spelling, mechanics, that sort of thing. It's not going to be the forefront. Uh, we're going we're gonna to work with this by looking at your writing, looking at the things you're turning in, and assessing uh, what's most important. So every year what I teach when it comes to language study is, is really different based on the students I have in class. And finally, something which the Pennsylvania Literacy Framework calls uh, lifelong learning. And, and this might be the kinds of skills uh, that help you continue to be successful throughout high school, through college, uh, and in the workplace. 
Some studies have shown that, you know, when we teach things uh, for college, skills for college, 80% of those are necessary on a daily basis in any job that you might pick. And then the independent reading, as I said, uh, I'll explain this uh, in class in, in greater depth, but uh, in, under a normal schedule on days one and four, we will take some, some time in class for independent reading. Uh, either way, every week, you're going to check in with me about the book you've chosen for yourself for uh, your independent reading. And uh, you'll reply to some of the, the comments that your students are doing. We'll do this in a, a Schoology discussion. I, I do like to think of reading as a social activity, not an anti-social activity. People read so they can uh, discuss books with other people and discuss ideas from books. And so I, I don't want you to just read and, and you know, accumulate a certain number of, of pages behind you. I want you to be able to talk with us about the things uh, that you're reading. Now, the one important thing about uh, reader responses is that I do need you to check in with me once every week. And there's a seven day window, but Sunday night is the end of that window. And since my goal is for you to read every week and talk to me every week, you can never logically make up a missed week. So if you don't read this week, you can't read this week next week. And so uh, these independent reader responses are one of the assignments that I, I cannot, do not, uh, and I, I couldn't even convince myself to take late because it just does not make sense to do that. Now, uh, check Schoology. You probably have a short assignment in there to make a Flipgrid video, which is going to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to me. Uh, always look at Schoology, as I said, each day. Make sure you're going through upcoming, checking off all those assignments, and also look at the uh, lesson for today. So that's my introduction, really quick introduction to the course and to me. Uh, I hope I've seen you in class already, but if I haven't, I'm looking forward to seeing you in person soon.